This video will discuss the Boltzmann factor in statistical mechanics. So from the previous video, we saw that typically atoms and molecules are very, very small particles that obey the laws of quantum mechanics and thus have energy levels which are distinct individual states. There are quantized values for what the allowed energies are and what the allowed states are that the system could be in. So these form a diagram like we have here. We have level one, which has uh, energy E1 here, and has three states. Its degeneracy is three, threefold or triply degenerate. For energy level two, I have five states as I've drawn here. It has energy E2, its degeneracy is five. Four states at E equals three, or at E equals E3, and its degeneracy is equal to four. From the previous video, we said that the probability that the system is in a given state if the, two ener if the energy of the two states are equal, are equal to one another. So the probability of state 2, 1 is equal to 2, 3, 2, 2 is equal to 2, 5, 3, 2 is equal to 3, 4. So within a given energy level, all states are equally likely to be observed. So this means that the probability that we observe a given energy level is a sum over all of the states in that energy level up to its degeneracy of the probability of each of those states, which each of them is equally likely. So it's the degeneracy times the probability that we're in the first state in that energy level. So the, pr the probability that the system has energy E2 is proportional to the degeneracy of that energy level. It's proportional to the number of states in that energy level. But the question is, how does it depend on energy? Because the probability of our, of our energy level has to also be proportional to some function of the energy. How does the energy of each level determine its relative probabilities? And that function for how the probability depends on energy is called the Boltzmann factor. So the Boltzmann factor is e to the minus energy of that level divided by the Boltzmann constant times temperature. So this is also equal to e to the minus beta times ei, where beta, the inverse temperature, is defined as 1 over the Boltzmann constant times temperature. Now we'll remind ourselves that the temperature here is always going to be taken in Kelvin, and the Boltzmann factor has a value of something like 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. It's the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. All right, so this says that if we have two states where the energy of state J is higher than the energy of state I, then the probability of the system being in state, state J or level J divided by the probability of the system being in level I is equal to some proportionality constant times the degeneracy of level J times the Boltzmann factor of level J, e to the minus energy divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature, divided by the probability of energy level I, C times its degeneracy times its Boltzmann factor. So the relative probabilities of two energy levels is going to be the ratio of their degeneracies divided by the ratio of their Boltzmann factor, or the ratio of their degeneracies times the ratio of their Boltzmann factors. So we can define the quantity delta E J I, which would be E J minus E I, which in this case, if E J is greater than E I is some value which is greater than zero. So the relative probabilities of these two energy levels is their ratio of degeneracies times E to the minus delta E J I over K T. So this number here, E to the minus delta E J I over K T, the Boltzmann constant is always positive. Temperature is always going to be either positive or zero. Uh, the ch this delta Eji is going to be positive because I've defined Ej to be bigger than Ei. So this is e to the minus some positive number. So this is going to be less than one. So if they have the same degeneracies, if they're both, say, singly degenerate, then we know that this higher energy level is less likely to be observed than the lower energy level. So the likelihood of our system being in a given energy level decreases with the exponential of its energy. So let's see some, 
Let's just see some numerical examples of what this means. All right, so let's say that delta EJI measured in units of KT here. So KT could be some is a unit of energy, so we can measure that as a uh, as some difference in energy between states. So KT at 300 Kelvin is about 0 0.6 kilocalories per mole, or about 2.5 kilojoules per mole at 300 Kelvin. So the Boltzmann, the relative Boltzmann factor here, so which is the ratio of their probabilities, which we then need to multiply times their degeneracies. So if the energy difference is KT, then you're about three times less likely to observe state J than state I, then times their degeneracies, whatever those are. So if the degeneracies are, same, are the same, then this is the ratio of the probabilities. If their degeneracies are different, then we have to multiply times that ratio. If the energy difference is 3 kT, then you're about 20 times less likely to observe state J than state I. At 10 kT, the probability becomes, you know, one, becomes one part per 10,000, and then smaller and smaller from there. So if the energy level is, in, is infinity times kT, there's a 0% chance of observing state J. So basically, we see that the bigger the energy separation gets, the less likely we are to observe the higher energy state. So the values of T, which are going to be allowed, are going to be somewhere between 0 and infinity. So that's always going to be some Kelvin value. So that means that the relative probabilities of our two states is going to be somewhere between 0 and the ratio of their degeneracies. So exam for example, the ratio of these degeneracies here is 5 thirds. So at T equals infinity, we're more likely to observe this state than this one. But at, at a very low T, we're much more likely to observe this state than this one, depending on these separations. So at T equals 0, at 0 Kelvin, the probability of the lowest energy state is going to be 1, and the probability of everything above there is going to be 0, because all the other se separations are going to be infinity times KT. At T equals infinity, all the probabilities are equal because the energy is all going to be 0 kT if t is infinity. So at, at 0 Kelvin, everything above the ground state is unpopulated. There's no probability. At t equals infinity, everything is equally likely. And then in between, there's this exponential dependence on the energy separation. So the Boltzmann constant tells us about the relative probability of observing each state depending on their separation in energy and the temperature.